Hello and welcome to Omaha, Nebraska, the heartland of America where East meets West. And this week, the people of Omaha are meeting the equestrian world and the equestrian world is meeting the city of Omaha as we welcome the FEI World Cup dressage finals. We're about 15 minutes away from the first horse and rider combination. And as you can see, the opening ceremonies here in the CenturyLink Center are already underway.
Well, well, we're here this week at the CenturyLink Centre for the FEI World Cup Finals, the Longines FEI World Cup jumping and today's FEI World Cup dressage that reaches its conclusion after four worldwide leagues have delivered 16 qualifiers to us here at Omaha and 14 take to the stage today to dance to their freestyle music to decide who will take the 2017 championships. Welcome to the FEI World Cup dressage finals 2017 from here, Omaha, Nebraska, the heartland of America. So plenty of people streaming in to the CenturyLink Center today to watch some absolutely world-class sport. In our field today, we have three former champions, Edward Gall of the Netherlands, Stefan Peters of uh, the United States of America, and two-time champion, Isabel Verth. We set the scene with a Grand Prix competition here two days ago, and Carl Hester, with his Olympic ride nip-tuck, slotted into an incredibly strong third position. Laura Graves and Verdades, the great white hope for the home side, the United States of America, and they were really dicing it score-wise with Isabel Verth, the eventual winner, and they are really going to be ones to watch today. But Isabel Verth, the winner in Gothenburg back in 92, and then the winner in Las Vegas in 2007. Isabel comes here hunting for a third World Cup Finals win, and she does so having won no less than five qualifiers in Europe this year on three different horses. Here in the United States of America, she rides Via Gold, the mare with which she is ranked the number one in the world. We're going to start off today with Brazilian Olympian Joao Victor Macari Oliva. Then it's Maya Tofta Olison making her World Cup debut. Marcella Krinkis Susmelia, Maria Florencia Manfredi, a uh, first rider for Argentina. Chris Diotli, another Olympian in our field, alongside Madeleine Vitavris. Stefan Peters, who took that title a few years ago for the United States of America, alongside his Rio teammate Casey Perry Glass with the Danish warm blood Gertling Guards Dublin. From the top ten of the world, Anessa Merkelova and Mr. X, then it's Laura Graves, Carl Hester, Edward Gall, Judy Reynolds, who won the Devon, Pennsylvania qualifier and finished third in the Western European League, and then wrapping it up will be Isabel Verth. And that is the trophy they're all aiming for, redesigned by our partner Remacra for the Las Vegas finals back in 2015. But the name's going right the way back to 1986, starting with Anna Greta Jensen and Mart Sog for Denmark. Well, with me here is Karen Pavicic. Karen, who's represented Canada at the World Equestrian Games level and, in fact, won the freestyle here at Omaha last year. So you have about three hours left, Karen, as the defending CenturyLink champion. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yeah, I'm looking forward to an exciting afternoon here. We have a great field ahead of us, and I think it's one of the strongest World Cups that we've seen, actually. So very excited to be here. Thank you. So... The arena looking superb today as our horse and rider combinations come forward to uh, prepare to dance. They have set movements that they must perform in their freestyle, but the order in which they perform them is very much up to the rider. And of course, they also get to select and arrange music to support their, uh, their work. The way the judging works is that 50% of the score is for the technical execution of those prescribed movements. The other 50% comes for the artistic um, side of the house across five judging areas. One of those judging areas is degree of difficulty, and this year we have a new way of judging that, and it's going to be very, very interesting. This is the first finals in which it's been used, and Karen and I will talk a little bit more about that during the first couple of tests. But of course, also, as it is dressage to music, we're going to give you plenty of opportunities to just really watch this top-class sport and enjoy the music as well. Here in the arena, they're uh, welcoming our judges. Our president today is Anne Gribbons of the United States of America, judging at C, judging at K, Maribel Alonso de Quinzanos of Mexico, Rafael Sala of France judges at E, Katrina Wust of Germany at H, Marietta Sanders von Ganswinkel of the Netherlands at M, Andrew Gardner of Great Britain at B, and Leif Tonblad of Denmark is a judge today at F. So, our very first to go is with us. They, uh, just warm up. They do their final warm up here inside the white boards. Joao has received the bell to signal that he can start, and in a moment he will signal for his music to start. As John said, there'll be the different things that riders will be performing today. There are required elements, but uh, they're, they have their choice as to what order they put their movements in. And uh, part of the degree of difficulty will be the combination of movements. They'll be looking at what combinations that we see here today. Wow, wow, wow. 
So starting us off in the 2017 FEI World Cup dressage finals to our Victor Marcari Oliva with Ishama dos Pinhes, the Brazilian Olympian from Rio last summer. Very difficult start here with one tempi changes right off of the bat. We've seen Joao twice in Europe since the Rio Games at the World Cup qualifiers at Neumünster and Sotogenbosch, scoring over 70% on both occasions. So we're looking at a change in music coming up here to indicate a catchy pirouette. And here's our first degree of difficulty where we see more than one rotation in the catchy pirouette. And that was quite successfully done. So the judges will accept that movement and their degree of difficulty. followed by one tempies into another double pirouette. So there's our first combination. It's quite interesting sometimes to see riders use floor plans from tests they've had to perfect anyway. We've got half passes have to be performed and a lot will ride the zigzags from the Grand Prix. Here he's ridden canter pirouette tempi, canter pirouette, which is from the special, isn't it? Correct. There's one of our first required movements for the Piaf on a straight line with a minimum number of steps, which is 10 steps, minimum number. You've noticed the music has changed to suit the trot now. Little loss of activity into that PF. Another change of music into the half pass. And you'll see there's a lot of symmetry here in this in this pattern so far, which the judges are looking for also. The other thing to keep in mind is we have seven judges here, and it's important when you're doing your choreography that you take into account the viewpoints from all the judges. So Johnny Olivar with Chama dos Pinhes for Brazil, our first competitor today, just in the walk tour of his freestyle program. Again, this is a required movement with a minimum number of a 20 meters extended walk and a minimum 20 meters of collected walk. You can hear some vocals in the background of this music as well, which is becoming more popular. So here we're going to look for another degree of difficulty with a combination of movements. This is quite a challenging choreography coming up from a half pass into two tempis on a circle line. Good beat of this music for the flying changes. No small mistake, too bad. So in this case, the judges will not accept the degree of difficulty for the two tempies on the curved line. 
You need to, uh, more than likely, you need to have a, a score of seven or above in order for the judges to accept that mark. And here's another example of the symmetry that the judges are looking for. Now it's half past left into two tempies on a circle line again. And he performed that beautifully. So in this case, the judges will accept the degree of difficulty. Another difficult transition from a canter to a piaf into a piaf pirouette. So another combination of movements. Difficult transition is also a degree of difficulty movement. So building up towards the conclusion of his freestyle test here to start our finals for 2017, Joao Victor Macari Oliva, the Brazilian Olympian with his horse, Chama dos Pinheiros. Young man took uh, an individual gold at the South American Games two years ago, ranked inside uh, the world's top 150, scored 68% here in the Grand Prix. How will he stack up today? He'd love to get the 70% he scored in Europe. He accepted degree of difficulty is one of five aspects that make up the artistic score there. They are rhythm, energy, elasticity, harmony between rider and the horse, choreography, and to include the use of the arena and inventiveness, and then that degree of difficulty, plus also a mark specifically for the music and interpretation of the music. And of course, incredibly appropriate music there for uh, Johnny with his uh, Brazilian themes, including the girl from Ipanema. That's what I was going to say too, John. The music was very fitting, very pleasing, very harmonious right overall. You, the, cha the change in music from one movement to the other uh, was well done. And um, I think a very pleasing test overall. A lot of symmetry. There was some little lack of um, energy today, I felt, in some places and a few small mistakes. But overall, a very harmonious ride. I'm sure he'll be happy with that performance. And he showcased the canter up front as well. You don't often see that, so obviously he thinks that's a real strength. That's right. And that's the advantage you have with making your own freestyle pattern is that you can um, choose to show the highlights of your horses and, and focus on that instead of on their, on their weaknesses. Um, and I think he did a, a great job with that. And we have a score on the board there for our first of 14. So Johnny goes into the mix zone. And uh, Joao Victor Marquerie Oliver scores a 70.171. There you can see the technical average from each of our seven judges. And in a moment, the artistic average from each of them going up there as high as 74% from the judge at B. And as we turn again, we see the total average from each judge, and all of that turns into a 17.463. So next to go is uh, the uh, Danish competitor, my Tofte Olesen, with uh, Birgit Meister and uh, my and Henrik Tofte's Rastik. So the start signal has been given. Mai will just signal for her music. So a combination ranked just outside the world's top 75. 12th in our Grand Prix here at the finals, Maya Tofte Olesen with the Danish warm blood, Rustik. Mai, who finished 12th on the Western European League, 
has actually trained with Anna Gretti Jensen, the winner of the first ever World Cup finals back in 1986. And Mai and this horse have only been an international combination since May of last year. So this is a little bit of more of a traditional start, Karen, with the Piaf Passage, but she's already bringing in inventiveness with this sort of serpentine passage to the Piaf. Yes, as a matter of fact, that used to be part of the Grand Prix Special many years ago, and has a high degree of difficulty being on a curved line. Judges are also looking for this to be as untest-like as possible when they're looking at their freestyle patterns. So going into the canter early on here is a good strategy. Small mistake in the two tempies. So here again we see a combination of movements with the tempi changes into double pirouette into a half pass. It's very brave placing the pirouette right in front of the judges at the short end of the arena like this and quite well performed. As I said, as the movements are done correctly, getting a score of seven or more for the degree of difficulty of movements, then the judges can accept that mark for the degree of difficulty. That's how it's calculated in the program. Obviously, one of this horse's strengths that she's repeating the pirouette again. This is one of the horses that, uh, you know, down the order, but, you know, great story, them coming to their first finals. But it's one of the horses that people have really connected with. He's got just this lovely expression. He looks like he just wants to go out and work for you, doesn't he? He sure does. Very willing horse. Very well performed. They seem to have a great partnership together too, even though, as you said, it's not very long that they've been together, but uh, they seem to get along very well. So you hear the change of music again for the walk now. Softer, quieter music. Denmark's Maya Tofta Olesen and Rustique with us in the ring. My came like a lot of riders from a non-horsey background and she delivered newspapers, worked as a baker, a nanny and a cleaner, all to pay for her first horse. This horse always shows a very clear rhythm in the walk, both in the extended and collected walk. The other pleasing thing with this combination is they have a very nice contact all the time too in this, throughout this work, with, which the judges are also looking for, looking for and taking into account in, their, in, the, in the artistic marks. So under harmony between horse and rider, that would come into effect, for example. You can hear the music. The crescendo of the music there for the extended trot. So of course that goes under the music and interpretation.
but it can also be a help and hindrance. If something starts to go wrong and you fall out of sync with your music, then you, you lose an awful lot overall because your music mark just drifts away. That's correct. But she's staying nicely on her music. It's a strong finish here with some of the more difficult movements, including that half pass passage and now a piaf pirouette. This is a high degree of difficulty. So the combination that uh, took some great results this year in Europe, in Poland, in Denmark, and at the London International Horse Show at Olympia in Great Britain. Maya Tofta Olesen and Rustig completing their freestyle for Denmark. I'm sure she's very happy with that performance. What a great experience for them. I'd say it's an amazing experience to work with Anna Greta Jensen anyway, who is world champion, European champion, first ever World Cup champion. But uh, for Mai to get to these finals has been a tremendous journey. So here we see some of the highlights from her test. Here's our degree of difficulty with a double canter pirouette. And it was the combinations, I think, that were quite well performed in this ride. She had a number of difficult combination from different movements, combining them together. And they were performed very well overall. It's very ambitious as well. I mean, this is a high technicality floor plan for a combination that are less than a year together. That's, that's right. She actually has um, quite a high degree of difficulty of 9.04. So one of, the, one of the higher ones, not the highest, but certainly uh, quite high overall. We're just seeing this uh, Piaf Pirouette fan either side of the center line as she built up towards her final halt and salute as well. Yeah, there was quite a, quite a huge degree of difficulty towards the end of her test specifically. And to put at the end of your ride, is, is like you said, it's, it's quite um, challenging because your horse is often quite tired then. So that shows the horse's strength that she's able to perform that at the end of her ride like that. Well, might together there. The little boy just watching the screen, waiting for her store score. Wow. Here it is, 74.318. That is a personal best, and what a day to score it at the World Cup Finals. Maya Tofta, Olison and Rustique. There are some artistic marks up at 79, 79.8 from the judge at F. 74.318, and the leader for Denmark, Maya Tofta, Olison. So that's one of our highlights coming up in this first half. Madeleine Vittavries, who set a very high standard with us here on uh, Grand Prix Day, finishing just outside the top five, sixth position for Madeleine, coming here as one of the Dutch riders at the World Cup Finals. And of course, they are such a... Uh, So just warming up here, we've got uh, Marcella krinkis susmelia with Smeers Molberg. Just showing the quality of our field, we've got yet another Rio Olympic combination with us. Two Danish warm blood horses in a row. Smeer Smolberg, owned by uh, Arine Meyer and Marcella Krinkis Susmelia. Riding in her fourth World Cup finals, having finished inside the top ten in Gothenburg last year with this horse, we welcome Marcella Krinkis Susmelia for Switzerland with Smeer Smolberg. Marcello finished fifth on the Western European League this year. The other thing to note is there's actually one single mark 
in the freestyles for your entrance and your exit halt. And there was a beautifully performed immobile halt to start with, followed by Passage immediately out of the halt. This year, Martella won a World Cup qualifier in Central Europe at Lippica and then placed fourth towards the end of the season at Neumünster in northern Germany. Music really suiting this horse. Well performed transitions. So technically, she's off to a great start. And just going back to those prescribed movements, the transitions Piaf Passage are actually a prescribed technical mark that will be given. Just underlining their importance exactly the same as in the Grand Prix set test. And here we see the symmetry again in the, in the choreography of her test. The music is very well done. You can really see it matching the footfalls of the horse. Super passage. Tell me, I mean, at this top level, I would imagine all 14 of these riders are going to have worked with professional musicians and arrangers and producers for this. I would think so. Really highlighting the Grand Prix movements with this horse early on in the test with many Piaf Passage transitions and then extended trot in between. It's a very interesting program so far. It's keeping your interest as you watch. So Marcella Krinke Susmelia and Smeers Molberg for Switzerland with their walk tour to La Vie en Rose. So interesting that she chose to walk down the long side. Perhaps not one of the horse's highlights. Doing more than nine two tempi changes, so the degree of difficulty goes up for that. Again, a change in music here for the counter pirouette. Lots of activity in the counter pirouette. And just a tiny bit stuck on the exit there as well. You have to say, there are, there are days when you're very, very close to your music, but this is the day that Marcella is right on the beat throughout. Big beginning of this pirouette. And again, I'd like to see more energy in the counter pirouette. So technically, I think the marks will drop here slightly. Looks like he might be getting a little bit tired. That was an interesting use of the zigzag from the long side of the arena. I like to see him taking more weight behind in those counter pirouettes.
So 17 one tempies straight down the center line away from the judge. Again, degree of difficulty will go up there. Yeah, pirouette. Oh, some small rhythm mistakes there at the end of the test. Looks like he's just a little bit tired. She's been scoring 75-76% in Europe this winter. That difficulty score is already over 80%. This looks like quite a good day for Marcella Krinke, Susmelia, and Smeas Molberg here at their fourth. Well, Marcella certainly fourth World Cup dressage finals. They were top ten together last year in Gothenburg. So for me, this, uh, uh, right the here, the Passage, this is one of my highlights. I love this horse's Passage. The, the Passage and the Piaf is very strong. And Marcella used this several times throughout the ride, not just the beginning, but throughout the ride and really highlighted that with this horse. The only small problem at the end of the ride where it looked like the horse was a little bit fatigued and perhaps the rhythm and energy uh, mark will go down slightly, but some real highlights. There's some real highlights here, though, for sure. Uh, I really enjoyed the choreography of this of this ride, uh, and the music was was super. And she interpreted the music extremely well. Actually, we've we've seen kind of three quite different musical styles or heard so far. Uh, Marcella, there she she has those earworms. They're songs that you know. They're familiar in the back of your mind, so you can kind of follow along, and also you feel. Good music always, if you could close your eyes, you can nearly tell what movement they're going to be doing. That's right. Well, a big, big smile there from Marcella. And just as we watch him be a little bit uh, stepping away quickly from that first halt, you go back to that first halt, uh, for the last halt, for when you go back to her first halt, she was bang on, a really secure, square halt. And uh, to put that in perspective, she was straight into then a really difficult transition up into Passage. As I said, there's one mark for the halt, John, so that's actually a very important point. So we're just close to having Marcella's uh, score. Marcella Krinkis Usmelia not quite scoring as well as she did in Europe. 74 261 here at the finals for second place. Some uh, 79s there in the artistic spread. Judge at E giving a 79.2. But overall, it's 74.261. That's very close behind, but it is behind. Maya Tofta Olesen and Rustique, who are our leaders for Denmark. So the first Argentinian to come to the World Cup dressage finals will ride now in the Grand Prix freestyle for the first time at the finals. Maria Florencia Manfredi with Van Duria Cassiero. Um, Adam, I did mention while I was in Florida that there are spectator judging clinics and uh, now we're in an international audience here. Just to let you know there's a new clinic just being opened up. There are spaces available. So Maria was 14th in the Grand Prix on 66.5 here on day one of the finals. That Grand Prix, obviously it serves as a great practice run, a familiarization run, and it helps set the starting order for today. Otherwise, they don't carry forward that score. <laughs> to the melody of Argentina, the tango, Maria Florencia Manfredi, Banduria Casero. Competitor at the Toronto Pan Ams in 2015, silver medalist at the South American Games with the Argentinian team. 
and took a freestyle win just last weekend on 72.5 at the Global Dressage Festival in Wellington, Florida. I'm sure she's looking to improve her score here for the Grand Prix. Again, an interesting beginning right out of the halt transition. So that already gets the judge's attention. So there's a high degree of difficulty on a curved line, the two tempes and more than nine changes. And the judges will accept that with a, a score of seven minimum. This is actually the very first World Cup Finals where the degree of difficulty dashboard uh, system has been used. And actually, uh, I, I couldn't have lucked into a better co-commentator because Karen actually worked extensively as one of the test riders for the introduction and the development of the system. So that's why she's quite so on it with Again, a nice symmetry with the wind tempies there in the curved line, more than 15 changes. So again, a high degree of difficulty. And we're seeing combinations of movements again. Yes, you're right, John. Uh, Katrina Woos and Daniel Golan, they've done a, a great deal of work with getting this program up and running. And I think it's a fantastic thing for our sport for the future creates a huge amount of transparency, even just for the riders. They, they submit their freestyle floor plan and the computer s tells them back, this is the score you would get. And I think a lot of riders were taken by surprise that what they thought was a tough floor plan actually was only a, a 7.9 and 8.3 and they went back to the drawing board a little bit. You're absolutely right. So we saw there a moment ago, one of uh, Maria's joker lines, what we call a joker line. So it's a, a line in the test where you can choose to do another line of one tempies or two tempies or an extended canter, for example, should you have a mistake early on in your ride. The famous tango jealousy for Maria Florencia Manfredi from Argentina with Banduria Casero in their walk tour here in Omaha. I know some of the judges have been a bit intimidated by this new program, but I think in the, in the end it will help them too. I think we have no fear for our seven here, though, from amongst the very top drawer in the world. Very catchy music for the trot. The beat is spot on. She's right on the beat of the music we have, but I, I felt once or twice in the test personally that it feels like it's rushing her work. The music is maybe just taking the horse along with it rather than vice versa. Maybe a little bit, but I would prefer to have the music that way than too slow, to be honest with you. It can make the horse look more energetic. But no luck of energy here today for Maria. Rhythm problems here, unfortunately. It's not always stepping regularly behind in the passage. steady in the contact here towards the end as well. And when you have 
these little errors starting to creep in more so towards the end. It goes back to what we said earlier on. It's perhaps just a little bit horse and rider fatigue. Yes. And so technically the mark might go down a little bit, but her, her uh, overall artistic mark could still be quite high. But let's not forget, the first ever Argentinian rider at the FEI World Cup dressage finals has just ridden through the Finnish flags. Maria Florencia Manfredi and Bandoria Casero for Argentina. Finishing off with a win in the freak style on their last competition and qualifying to represent Argentina at the 2017 FEI World Cup dressage finals. So we talked about some of these um, examples of degrees of difficulty in the catalog. So here's a double pirouette, for example. So um, the way the system works is it automatically will give you a degree of difficulty mark if the judges accept that movement. And again, also the combination of movements is another aspect of the degree of difficulty. And of course, your degree of difficulty is more so if you were to score a 9, 9.5 or 10 on a movement than if you scored a 7 on the movement. So again, the computer does all that ratio work as well. Yeah, look, it looks like Maria is having such a great time out there today with her horse, really enjoying this time with her horse in the arena, enjoying this experience here in Omaha. And very happy with her performance at the end. It's a horse that was actually originally bred to be a show jumper, but they got together four years ago, and now here they are at the World Cup Finals. Maria Florencia Manfredi and Banduria Casero. We stand by for their score. Here we go. Into third place at the moment on 70.664. So third of four who've run so far for Maria Florencia Manfredi. And that means she's actually improved because she came through as the 14th of 14 qualifiers. And now she's got one of our combinations in her rear view mirror. So Maria Florencia Manfredi, Banduria Casero into third on 70.644 with a high there in the artistics of 78. You might have just heard there the announcement of the uh, spectator judging score for our previous competitor, of course, uh, with SAP now the official analytics sponsor of FEI World Cup Dressage. And of course, you watching here on our uh, global broadcast as well can download that app and you can submit your scores as well and be part of the competition here in the CenturyLink Center in Omaha. Christy Oakley for Australia. Christy, who was last at the World Cup Finals in 2004. Finishing fourth on the Western European League of FEI World Cup Dressage, including a win out in Poland. Christy Oakley for Australia rides Du Soleil, the finisher in 10th place in the Grand Prix here earlier this week. A look of determination. This horse has so much expression in his trot. You know, and the power of that first movement absolutely backed up by the music. Yeah. Gets your attention immediately. And Piaf pirouettes, they're a real balancing act, aren't they? Because yeah. you can improve your degree of difficulty score, but it's so easy to lose the quality of the Piaf. That's right. And it's one of the most difficult movements for most horses. The highest degree of collection that you ask. And I like the fact that she's riding a half pass towards the opposite end of the arena. 
So we have two judges sitting on the A short side of the arena, so it's letting the judges see that movement towards them also. That showing some good use of her arena. music change as she goes into the Piaf. And again, we see the symmetry in her choreography. a real highlight here with this horse extended trot. You can hear the audience appreciating it also here. It was very interesting uh, going to Las Vegas two years ago as well and a lot of the European riders who'd been before had prepared themselves for the audience to applaud during the test and actually a lot of them really enjoyed it. A little tension in this Piaf. Oh, rhythm mistake there. Unfortunate. So, four time Australian Olympian Christy Oakley and Du Soleil in their walk tour. They scored 76% in Denmark and Austria on the World Cup circuit in Europe and had that win in Poland as well to help them into fourth place on the league. The walk rhythm is sometimes not clear with this horse. So in the, from the technical point of view, her marks could become a slightly lower. Being the required movement in the freestyle. Straight, clean changes. You can see her appreciating her horse, giving him a pat at the end of the diagonal. This variation of the uh, Game of Thrones opening music being used for this section of the test. I mean, for many years it was Hans Zimmer's Pirates of the Caribbean that everyone used, That's and I bet right. it's that now. I yeah. bet the lower level music judges are going, oh, if I hear Game of Thrones once more. There definitely seems to be trends in music, that's for sure. So that was quite steep half passes with pirouettes in the middle, so quite a high degree of difficulty there, and quite creative. hear the music change for the extended canter. So it just eats up the ground. Nicely performed. This booth is about as close as I've ever sat to a Grand Prix dressage arena. And actually, with that coming down an extended counter, that counter period, you've got to be quite brave to be a judge. You feel like, oh my goodness, if she doesn't get this halt, we're in trouble. So, a couple of mistakes in that one Tempe's there. Hopefully she has a joker line. Here we see there's a joker line where she's repeating the one Tempe's. So her technical mark will go up. To recover technically. And again, we see the symmetry. Difficult transition from the canter pirouette directly into Piaf. And here is the horse's highlight to finish with one-handed extended trot. Great finish.
Chris De Oakley and Du Soleil for Australia, who finished 10th in the Grand Prix here on day one with a 71.8%, hunting down the 76 that they scored in Europe. But will those couple of errors just keep them down the order here in Omaha? First appearance at a World Cup final since 2004, so 13 years for Christie, who rode as a young rider for Germany before then declaring for Australia. She holds dual citizenship, following in the footsteps of her father as an international dressage rider. When you compare that, our previous competitor had, uh, I think, 40 declared movements. Christie had 42. She's just so much packed in there. Absolutely. Very impressive horse, especially in this extended trot. And this is where the audience appreciated it as well. For me, this was one of the highlights in her test. This combination of movements with the counter half pass, very steep half passes, followed by the counter pirouette. So as I said, high degree of difficulty and very well performed. Also with the changes of music. This horse's highlights here in the Piaf. It was an unfortunate rhythm mistake in that Piaf. So technically her mark will go down. Yes, it's worth remembering that the overall Piaf technical mark that will be given is for all the Piafs averaged together. So it is when you have a mistake in one of those prescribed movements, it really holds you back. That's correct. That's what I said with the Joker lines, for example. She chose to do another set, another line of one tempies. So then the average of those two lines of one tempies will hopefully bring it up. She was leaving uh, discipline manager Thomas Power hanging there for the high five. Christy Oakley and Du Soleil just a little bit under what they've got in Europe, but they go into the lead, 75-7-4-3. I think she looked at the score and she went, oh, I'm a little disappointed, and then she looked one box to the right for the rank, and she went, oh, yeah, I'm in the lead in the World <laughs> Cup finals. Christy Oakley, Du Soleil, 75.743, setting the standard here at the moment in Omaha. So, U.S. Olympian and one of three former World Cup champions in our field, Stefan Peters with Rosemunde. This is his next big horse. He just handed over the ride on Legolas, his rear horse, and Rosamunda will be the one he has now aimed at Tokyo. Christy Oakley leads here for Australia in front of Maja Tofte Olesen for Denmark, and Marcella Krinkis Uzmelia for Switzerland holds the third spot. Madeleine Vitevries is with us, the first of two riders for the Netherlands. Sadly, Hans-Peter Minderhood, the defending champion, his horse was not available to come to uh, Omaha due to late injury. It's really sad that he's not able to come here and uh, defend his title, but Madeleine Vitevries is certainly flying the flag high for the Netherlands. This is one of my favorite horses here. Ranked inside the world's top 30, Madeleine Vitevries with Tsenin for the Netherlands. She was third at Neumunster and scored a 78% for top five at Stuttgart. Overall, she finished eighth on the Western European League. You saw the horse react to the atmosphere there. Lots of people in the stands here today. It's almost full. the change of music from the trot to the passage. The combination had a tremendous outdoor freestyle season last year, taking four-star wins at Rusendal, Rotterdam and at Mallorca. all top-level sport, there's a tremendous mental aspect to it, but 
there must be a big, big mental aspect for Madeline now having had that early problem to just try and stay calm and, and help her horse achieve that calmness itself. Absolutely. Looks like he's settled down though quite nicely. Nice change of music to match her going from the passage to a trot half pass. And again, passage half pass, it isn't specified, it's an optional, you're just trying to show off, aren't you? That's correct. Very expressive extended canter. And again, the change of music for the pirouette. Like you said, John, you can almost predict what the movement's going to be just by listening to the music. I find the music tempo just a little bit slow for my liking. A super walk. So alongside the superstars Hans-Peter Minderhoud and Edward Gall, she qualified for the third available Dutch place for one of the strongest dressage nations in the world, Madeleine Vitevries and Senin. You know, a lot of it is personal preference when it comes to the music, too, John. So what one judge likes, another judge might not like. I, I, I've trod very carefully saying this, but I, you've got to look at your constituency, don't you? I mean, the average age of judges is not necessarily there with Lady Gaga and Justin Bieber. That's true, but, but I, good music is also good music. And, and the beat, I think, is very important. For me, this canter music doesn't really highlight the horse's canter. But technically, that was a very strong curved line of one tempies. Another extended canter. bit of traveling in that in that PF but she was clever with the way she placed that PF and most judges will not be able to see that and on down to her final halt PF to halt right practically in the box of the judge at sea today our American judge Anne Gribbons Madeline Vitevries and Senin for the Netherlands Looked like she was just a little bit behind her music. Mm. What a journey it's been when you look at her competition record this winter. Coming to Omaha has clearly been her policy. We saw her at Stuttgart, Salzburg, Neumünster, Amsterdam and Sertogenbosch on the Western European League. And she picked up good placings at all of them, eventually finishing eighth and helping her ranking up into the world's top 30. I'm going
So technically, for me, this is one of the strongest rides that we've seen. However, artistically, I'm not as convinced. Here we see some two tempies, well executed. Very slight swinging in them. Great shot at close up of the PF. You can see the diagonal movements into the passage. The transition was very well done. Horse is quite straight. Lots of lift there. And a very happy finish to the test. Madeleine Vitavries and Senin for the Netherlands have completed their 2016-2017 FEI World Cup dressage journey. Will it have been a performance good enough to go into the lead? 75.743 is what leads the way for Christy Oakley, Australia. Madeline working with her groom and the FEI stewards there on the uh, tack inspection. They just check the bitting, the fly hood, to make sure it's all in compliance after the test. And not only for the rules, but also for the welfare of the horse to make sure that that is absolutely protected and paramount at all times in our equestrian sport. We're a sport of two athletes, both very willing participants, but uh, it is the rider's job to explain to the horse each time what's happening and to prepare them for that experience. And they work together as that team of two hearts. So whose name will go on that trophy? Might it be one of our previous winners, Isabel Wirth, Edward Gall, or our next rider, Stefan Peters, or will it be a new name like Laura Graves or Carl Hester? <laughs> Madeleine Vitavries and Senen, they've done it. Into the lead on 79.1, and <laughs> quite right to fist pump. That is a super score. And look at that, artistics all above 80% from our judges. Madeleine Vitavries and Senen in the lead on 79.1. A great score for that combination. And you can see technically she was very strong also. So, the U.S. support strong, not just in the Kiss and Cry, but right around this CenturyLink Center for our next to go. Stefan Peters and Rosamund for Wins Farms Horse by Rock Forever. So, Stefan Peters ranked inside the world's top 25 at the moment. Actually just running a moment or two early, yes, as the clock kick ticks across to 3.15. The bell goes immediately for Stefan Peters. Eighth in our Grand Prix here in Omaha, ranked inside the world's top 25. Stefan Peters with Rosamund, the winners of the World Cup qualifier in Las Vegas. He's been scoring 78% this winter, but in Europe has scored over 80% in freestyle. And this combination need to do that today to take the lead. Stefan took the 2009 World Cup Finals title. He's a world medalist with Ravel at the World Games in 2010 and Pan Am medalist on a number of occasions, including most recently with Legolas. You can hear the strong beat of the music here, matching the footfalls again. Looks 
like he could be a little ahead of his music at the moment. Slight swinging in those two tempes, but accurately ridden. As a rider, I prefer to be a little bit chasing my music than being ahead of it. You see him really preparing for that canter pirouette. Almost over sitting, getting a bit stuck in the double pirouette. Very steep angle in the half pass. That actually is something that stayed with them, that canter pirouette from the Grand Prix two days ago. Stefan will really want to try and get Rosamund to sit, but also keep those front legs square onto the shoulder rather than bringing them back. So clean one tempi changes, so they're a little bit swinging. Still looks like he's a bit behind his music. Or sorry, ahead of his music. Well, this is a better pirouette. If there are any tricks out there in ring craft and positioning that can help move him back, Stefan will know all the tricks in the book. Years of experience, yeah. four times an Olympian for the United States. Looks like he's getting more on track now. And that pirouette to the left was better than to the right. So here he gets to repeat the pirouette to the right. Pedestal in the Piaf. And a difficult transition to go from that canter pirouette to Piaf directly into the walk. So a combination of movements for his degree of difficulty. Olympic bronze medalist with the US last summer, an Olympic bronze medalist for the second time in his career, the 2009 World Cup champion, Stefan Peters, riding Rosamund in his walk tour here. So Stefan just showing the minimum amount of walk there. Massage half pass. Very difficult movement to perform. I mean, the crowd are really behind him, but it starts to make you a little bit worried that, you know, when Laura Graves comes forward, who's the closest in touch with the leaders, that home advantage could be turned into home disadvantage. One of the mares highlights the extended trot. Stefan's specialty, the half passes in the trot. And you notice that Stefan's using the trot and the Piaf Passage to finish with him in his test. Keeping him active. And the Piaf Pirouette getting a little bit stuck there, but he got out. High degree of difficulty. Another Piaf pirouette, oh, 
slight rhythm mistake. Mare almost oversits here sometimes. <laughs> Stefan Peters, I was waiting for something. We used to have on Legolas Let's Do Dressage. We have a bit of an Omaha at the end of a real musical tour from Stefan Peters and Rosamund here today, as well as his dressage. He's going to ride that wave of support. Is he going to ride it all the way to the head of affairs, or is Madeleine Vitavlis' 79 good enough to hold the lead going into the judging break at the halfway point? Definitely one of the hometown favorites. And actually, we're in the perfectly neutral part of America because, you know, oh. Stefan is the star of the West Coast. The East Coast comes, but this here at Omaha is where East meets West, so everyone can just support their U.S. riders. Here we see him, a very active Piaf, a good transition into that from the Passage. That was one of the best Piaf Passage transitions in the program. Pirouette to the left. You can see how much the mare sits for, his, for her counter pirouettes. And the one tempi changes. A little bit swinging here, but they were clean and accurate. So this combination have scored over 80% in their careers. Their spring scores have been 78. So and they very need to just pull it up. Very challenging finish to his test. Yeah, it's just a real shame that Rosamund just actually almost giving him too much in that final Piaf pirouette into the halt. Another smile from the uh, Californian, Stefan Peters and Rosamund for the US to bring us up to the judging break. Stefan Peters goes into third on 75.764. The judges just can't overlook those technical errors today, particularly in such an important moves as the canter pirouettes and the piafs. So 75.764 for third. Plenty of good artistic scores there, as high as 83 from the judge at H, 80 at C, and 82 at M. Stefan Peters and Rosamund into third as we go into the judging break, sitting on the podium behind Christy Oakley of Australia. And there is our leader, Madeleine Vitivris, on 79.046 with Senin. Well, let's have a look back at how the competition has shaped up so far. Madeleine Vitavries had to be one of the favorites out of this first half of the competition, and she proved exactly that. She was sixth in the Grand Prix the other day, very unlucky not to finish in the top five who get the very best of the draw, and she proved exactly why the Netherlands is one of the best countries at this sport in the world. Well. Last to go before the break was Stefan Peters, uh, one of our former champions in the field, and Jim Rose has just spoken to him. Thank you much, John. Stefan's here, 52-year-old native of Germany, now of San Diego, California. You're good when this event is played on American soil, having won it in Las Vegas. Describe your ride today. You know, it was uh, much better than the Grand Prix. Um, again, this was her very first time playing with the big boys and big girls. And uh, right off the start, she started out extremely expressively. I had a lot of energy underneath me. And uh, she did a very nice test with uh, good changes, uh, super pirouettes, wonderful half passes. And she walked a bit more relaxed than she did in the Grand Prix. So a really nice step ahead. And uh, for a 10-year-old horse, I'm super pleased. Seemed like a little ahead of the music was that she was just excited in front of a big crowd at home. Yes, in the beginning she she broke to the canter without me asking for it. So the first few seconds were a little bit ahead, but that's not the moment when you bring her back to the trot and restart. So simply a few seconds ahead. But later on, uh, I want to say two minutes into the test, we caught up with the music and things worked out OK. You went with a high degree of difficulty. Roll the dice a little bit. How do you think she did? I should did great. It's a, it's a very difficult freestyle, uh, not just for an, an experienced Grand Prix horse, but even for a young one. So that she did as well as she did, um, again, I'm super pleased. 
Congratulations, Stevens, on a good trip to Nebraska. Thank you very much. Stevens Peters of the United States here on Freestyle Day at the FEI World Cup. But Madeleine Vitevries is our leader. You just see how much that means to these athletes, but only to uh, go into the lead, but to go on such a good score. 79% for this combination is really putting down a marker in the sand to watch them. Madeleine Vitevries is our leader for the Netherlands in front of Christy Oakley, Du Soleil for Australia. Stefan Peters just slots into third, but it's very, very close down there. Maya Tofta Olesen in fourth in her first World Cup finals. Marcella Krinkis is Melia, Maria Florencia Manfredi. Now, Maria is riding in her very, very first World Cup finals, but so is the nation of Argentina. It's their first athlete at these finals. And uh, Joao Victor Macari Oliva rounds it up at the moment for Brazil. So they're setting up the surface here right up to tip top condition, ready for our next horse and rider combination at 3.45. Of course, all of our competitions under the auspices of the International Equestrian Federation. And you can find out so much about all of our eight disciplines under the FEI at FEI.org on the Internet. And join the conversation as well on social media and make sure you include the hashtag FEI World Cup Finals. So at this halfway point, Madeleine Vitevries is our leader and uh, Jim Rose caught up with her just a short while ago back in the Kiss and Cry. So well done to Madeleine Vitevries. What a place to set a personal best of 79%. And again, a young horse at the Grand Prix level, um, just 10 years old, exactly the same as Rosamund, who we saw straight after with Stefan Peters. Uh, Stefan, you know, absolutely says it's a young horse. I couldn't be happier with her. And, uh, you know, as we said, Stefan now, he's on the road to Tokyo and he's going to concentrate on Rosamund for this next three and a half years. But uh, for you, Karen, where do you feel, uh, you know, Stefan, so much good, but just in this company, you've got to be good everywhere, don't you? Yes, you do. And I, I think, obviously, you saw him very high in his artistic side of things, which is which is great, but a high degree of difficulty, some things he performed really, really well. But um, I think, for me, the, the lowest point of the test was the walk for the mayor and uh, there's there's two marks for the walk there's a mark for your collected walk and your extended walk and I think that's where um, there were some challenges and, and like you said John also the the Piaf uh, where the, the mayor tends to over sit and get a little bit stuck and we also saw that in the counter pirouettes well Madeline Vitevries sits at the top of the tree, but we spoke to each and every one of our competitors so far. Let's see how they're finding the Omaha Finals experience.
Well, thanks to Jim Rose catching up with all of those riders. So we're in the judges' break here at the FEI World Cup Dressage Final. And Madeleine Vitevries and Senin are our leaders for the Netherlands on a great score, a personal best, 79. Christy Oakley in second with Du Soleil and Stefan Peters and Rosamund in the third spot at the moment for the USA. Maya Tofta Olesen, Marcella Krika Susmelia, Maria Florencia Manfredia, and Joao Victor Marcari Oliver. And of course, seven more to come, including Edward Gal, 2010 World Cup champion, Isabel Verth, twice World Cup champion, current world number one, and for the United States of America, Laura Graves and Vidalis, who finished individually fourth at the Rio Olympic Games last summer. Well, we have a great saying that uh, no hoof, no horse. Looking after our horses is so important. For the want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For the want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For the want of a horse, the battle was lost. And the men who keep the shoes on the running machines are the farriers. And we spoke to the show farrier here at the CenturyLink earlier on today. So, just a few minutes away from the restart of competition here in the CenturyLink Center, Omaha, Nebraska, in the FEI World Cup Dressage Finals for 2017. But it's just one of two finals we have here this weekend. For the last few years, we've been holding the dressage alongside the Longines FEI World Cup Jumping Finals. Last night, we had final two, and Romain Duguay of Switzerland scored one of just six clear rounds in the first round and then came through. And Romain now goes into the final day within a fence of the leader, Gregory Watterley. Gregory and this horse have had an amazing career together. They've really clicked, and they clicked right up the leaderboard last night as well in the Longines FEI World Cup jumping. But he won on the opening night. He won again last night. McLean Ward, Double H Azure, are cruising this championship so far with just one day to go. Could it be a dream come true, a fairy tale, a US win here at the first ever World Cup finals to be held in Omaha, Nebraska? Not far behind them is defending champion Steve Gerdat, but McLean Ward, you don't see him with a lot of emotion. You can see what this World Cup Finals means to him and to be leading on home soil. You can join all the action in the Longines FEI World Cup Jumping Final, the final competition tomorrow here from the CenturyLink, and it starts at 2 o'clock Central Daylight Time, local here in Nebraska. So... 
We're just going to take a very short pause and we'll be back with you a moment or two before our next horse. Next horse and rider in the ring at 3.45 and we'll talk to you just before that. Hello and welcome to this amazing state-of-the-art arena, the CenturyLink Center in Omaha, Nebraska, where we play host to the 2017 FEI World Cup Dressage Finals. And there's the one they all want to win, the only worldwide Link series in the sport culminating in the award of that trophy, the World Cup title. FEI World Cup Dressage from Omaha, Nebraska. We're halfway through the Grand Prix freestyle and we're just moments away from having our next horse and rider combination in the ring here. So, we've got uh, a great field coming up. We start off with US Olympian Casey Perry Glass. Uh, Casey's going to be followed into the ring then by Anessa Merkelova inside the world's top 10 with Mr. X. Laura Graves and Vidalis, they're right up there in the world rankings as well. Top five for the combination that were fourth at Rio. Carl Hester and Nip Tuck, the Olympia winner. 
at uh, London last December. Edward Gall, Glock's voice, Edward, the 2010 World Cup champion, Judy Reynolds, and then Isabel Wirth. But our current leader with a new personal best for her is Madeleine Vitevries and Sen in this just 10-year-old horse. Really brought it home today, 79.046 over a percentage improvement on their previous personal best. And for a young horse, that just makes you really sit up and look at them because they are just going to get better and better Absolutely. and better. Absolutely. They have a great future ahead of them. Madeline's followed by, in fact, Stefan Peters and Rosamund. We've got a confirmed score for Stefan now of 75.879, which moves him into second. Christy Oakley and Du Soleil are in third. There's Edward Gall, Edward with his Rio ride. He just rode very, very few World Cup shows this year in order to get his qualification to come to the finals. And he won his, his title in 2010 on US soil. Could he replicate that? Casey Perry Glass starts her music. Seventh in the Grand Prix, ranked in the top 20 in the world, part of the US team that won bronze in Rio last summer. Casey Perry Glass rides Gertling Guards doublet. <coughs> Scored 80 and 79% for uh, two top placings in World Cup qualifiers at the Adequan Global Dressage Festival in Wellington. And Casey is trained by Debbie McDonald, part of the US team that won silver at Athens in the Olympics and also one of the US winners of the World Cup trophy. So a very strong start, starting with the Passage Piaf Tour immediately out of the halt. Slight rhythm mistake in that extended trot. Hopefully she has another extension later in her floor plan. Casey's really managed uh, doublet over the winter as well. It's like knowing she wanted to come to Omar, but she started the ramp up very, very steadily. At the five star in February at the Global, she rode actually in the special rather than the freestyle and then only came out for the World Cups. I think it was very clever on her part. Of course, looks very fresh still. Has such a steady rhythm throughout all of this work. And here's another trot extension. So they'll take an average of those two trot extensions into her technical mark, so her mark will go up for the trot extension now. We're on your screens throughout today, thanks to the uh, degree of difficulty dashboard scoring system, we're able to show you live the technical score achieved at the moment and also the degree of difficulty score which forms part of the artistic marks. And this is the first World Cup finals at which this new system has been used. The beat of the music is very good here with the passage. Music changing for the walk. Showing good relaxation. Dublé looks very attentive to Casey today. So Casey Perry Glass and Gertling Guards doublet. In fact, they only made their Grand Prix debut in January 2016 and were burst onto the stage. Good enough to be selected for Rio.
nicely performed two tempies on a curved line. His flying changes look effortless with him. Change in music for the counter extension. Could have a little more jump at this pirouette. A small mistakes in their one tempies. So that technical mark you're seeing there is 75. You compare that back to the Grand Prix score the other day of 73.8. Little bit of traveling in the counter pirouette, and it's. A mark for that double pirouette. It's not two separate pirouettes, but one mark. Very nice flowing half pass. is going to work up her final center line now, the second of three for the U.S. And it's too bad that it doesn't appear she has a joker line planned in her floor plan, so unfortunately she can't repeat those one tempi changes to improve her technical mark. Just this 45-degree fan in Piaf at either side of the center line. She should pick up some marks from that. Very strong finish. <laughs> U.S. Super Olympic hot. medalist. U.S. Olympic medalist Casey Periglass and Gotland Guards doublet completing their test here in Omaha. <laughs> Getting us back on the way. A treat for the audience to have the full complement of three U.S. riders. A, a country can only send a maximum of three athletes to the World Cup Finals. Casey and Laura Graves were direct qualifiers off the North American League. And then Stefan Peters, thanks to his world ranking, invited as an extra athlete, meaning that the audience here, and it is a big, big audience today in the CenturyLink, are being treated to three bites of the apple of seeing U.S. riders and U.S. Olympians riding here. A very happy Casey leaving the ring. Here we see a nice trot extension. This was the second trot extension where there was no rhythm mistake. Unfortunately, there was just some small mistakes here today, technically bringing her mark down, including in the one tempies. And the one tempies also have a coefficient. But overall, a very pleasing and harmonious ride, even despite the small mistakes. And a score for Casey to go into second place. So as we just wrap up the highlights reel here of uh, Casey Perry Glass and Gertling Guards doublet in this FEI World Cup Finals. Again, another Danish warm blood horse as well. There's actually a significant amount of the field here comes from that stud book. Artist artistically, some very high marks. And again, 14 months after making their Grand Prix debut, they're at the World Cup Finals. Casey Perigas, Gertling Guards, Dublin just standing by for their score. Stefan Peters there to her right, left as you see it. Well, we weren't as 
organised as we were last time. We are slightly high. Casey Perry Glass, Gertling Guards Doublet, they go into second place on 77.146. So not quite their uh, Wellington scores from this spring, but good enough for second place at the moment. So Casey Perry Glass in second for the United States of America. Madeleine Vitevries out in front for the Netherlands. And the US also with third place in the form of Stefan Peters and Rosamund. Six to go. Inessa Merkelova and then the Grand Prix top five from two days ago here in Omaha. Mr. X, so now the combination that were ninth in the Grand Prix and they're ranked eighth in the world in Merkelova with Mr. X. Four times a competitor at the World Equestrian Games. Qualified through to the Grand Prix special test at the Rio Olympics last summer. Inessa Merkelova and Mr. X. A very dramatic start. Ness was the winner of the Central European League of World Cup Dressage, having taken two victories in Moscow with over 80% last September. So we see a high degree of difficulty right from the very, very beginning. And showcasing this horse's talents in the Piaf Passage. It's a Russian bred horse on Trikana bloodlines. Quite a lot of air miles as well. Just three, four weeks ago, this horse was in the Middle East competing at Al Shaka in Doha. They were fifth in the five star freestyle there. Very impressive extended trot. Crossing in the half pass. I'd like to see a bit more bend. So the combination ranked eighth in the world at the moment. This is Inessa's fifth World Cup Finals. Last spring in Gothenburg, she and Mr. X placed seventh in the FEI World Cup Dressage Finals. So she's staying on her music very well. Really appears he knows his job. Small mistake in the beginning of those one tempies. Yeah, we saw those two 10 year old horses just before the break. This was that horse two years ago. I mean, Ines has got great tune out of this horse for the last few years. He's still only 13 and has been at the top level for three years or more now. A little bit of traveling in this canter pirouette. Could have more bend also.
changing the music into getting another pirouette. suite of music of traditional Russian and from Russian composers for the Moscow native. This pirouette to the left is better than to the right. Just we're leading a bit in that counter half pass. So we're looking for six to eight steps around that counter pirouette. So you can see th some of these difficult movements. The judges did not accept the mark because it didn't score over seven from a technical point of view, so that's bringing her mark down a little bit. Yes, this is the third horse and rider combination with a record card that suggests they can score over 80% in this test, in this competition, but just failing to get it. But Casey Perry Glass and Stefan Peters have been a lot closer to that mark than it looks like Anessa Merkelova and Mr. X are going to be. <laughs> so, Anessa Merkelova, Mr. X for Russia complete their World Cup final journey for this season as they wrap up their freestyle there as Madeleine Vitavries, our current leader for the Netherlands, with 79.046, a personal best for her. So Anessa Merkelova riding in her fifth World Cup finals, her fourth alongside this horse. We had a panel discussion for the Region 4 people here earlier today in Omaha. And uh, one of the questions that was asked was whether or not the spectators could get the floor plans ahead of time mm -hmm. so that they could also follow along a little bit more. And I think that's the, one of the beauties of this new program, uh, that potentially that could be used for that. I think it's really helpful to educate the spectators and the audience as to what movements are required and going to happen. And they can follow along a little bit more ahead of time. So Inessa Merkelova, Mr. X, completing their test with us here today. Say uh, this horse has been at the top for such a long time, still just 13 years old. And Inessa pleased as punch with him today. Inessa served as the Russian senior team coach, ridden at four World Equestrian Games, including making it through to the special back in 2014 with this horse, and also qualifiers for the special in Rio in Brazil last summer at the Olympic Games. Very happy with her horse today. So Inessa Merkelova, 75, 696, goes into fifth spot. 
in Esther there there with artistic marks, a lot of them over 80%, including from the Judge Def, 81.2. So Esther Merkelova, Mr. X, finishing in the fifth spot. Remember one of the uh, stories from Rio we picked up was that Inessa, in fact, to help calm Mr. X, she reads him love stories in the stables. Oh. Yes. <laughs> There's not a lot more to say about that, is there? As we get a little bit kinder, a 77, 798, we have the point in third place. The might of people judging that up to... So we go into our final five, and there's a very good chance that uh, we're going to have some of the uh, top scores bracketing this because we have starting off our final run of five the runner-up in the Grand Prix and finishing that run of five the winner of the Grand Prix Laura Graves there on your screen Isabel Verth coming in half an hour's time Madeleine Vitevries is still our leader for the Netherlands 79.046 are we about to see 80% be broken here in freestyle at the uh, finals well her uh, Scores over the uh, last few weeks, including breaking 80% in Grand Prix regularly down in Florida, would suggest that that is going to be the case. Starting off our final run of five, Laura Graves and Vidalis, the world number four for the United States of America, second in the Grand Prix on 79.8%. Laura was individually fourth at the finals two years ago. Individually fourth at the Olympic Games. She wants to step up onto that podium. And if she can score the 85% that gave her fourth at Rio, then she is going to lay down a serious gauntlet here in Omaha. The degree of suppleness with this horse always is impressive. You can really see clear bending in the half passes, both at the passage half pass and the trot half passes. Laura stood individual silver at the Toronto Pan American Games. Two teammates, Stefan Peters. After a very strong start here. Great crossing and expression. And the transitions from the trot to the passage are seamless. A tiny bit ahead of her music there. is certainly amongst one of the most significant challenges to Isabel Verth for these finals. Laura Graves and Vidalis for the United States of America in the Warp Tour. You seem very focused today. I think having broken 80%, becoming only the 14th rider in history to achieve that at Wellington this spring and then replicating it again, I think to have come so close in the Grand Prix at the finals to 80% has left her so, so hungry. I know that Laura has made some small tweaks to her music throughout the season just to try and perfect this as much as possible and for this event. So two tempies on a curved line immediately into one tempies. Again, very high degree of 
difficulty and performed beautifully. Real highlight here with this horse rider combination of the canter pirouettes. They seem to be right on their pattern. And let's see the symmetry here. I think the real quality in these changes is that if you look very well done. If you looked from her ankles up, you would just imagine the horse is cantering without changing at all. It is just super quality. You can see Laura smiling in appreciation of the audience. She's out there having a great time with her horse. You can see that. got both her technical and her degree of difficulty over 80% at the moment. It's where she wants to be, where she needs to be. Yeah, she's right on her music. Really going for it in this trot extension. I think Laura is going to be more than happy with this performance. Out of the Passage, she pushes the throttles forward into extended trot down to her final halt and salute. She can do no more, but it looks like she's done an awful, awful lot. Laura Graves and Vidalis for the United States of America. Fantastic job. Looking set to take over the lead from Madeleine Vitabris, but has she done enough to really challenge the likes of Carl Hester, Edward Gall, Judy Reynolds, and Isabel Verth, all still to come? I don't think she could have expected anything more today. She did a fantastic job. She loves this horse, but I think Diddy, as he's known at home, is going to get some extra treats tonight. They have seriously woken up this competition now we're going north of 80 percent and i think we're going to stay there i think you're right john here we see some in this lovely half pass work another real highlight from the test with the two tempies and in directly into the one tempies Robert Dover, Debbie McDonald. <laughs> Riding alongside Laura. A huge trot extension here. It's always nice I think Robert and Debbie should do that in American Equestrian Scott Talent next year. Stefan Peters amongst the first to congratulate Laura. Well, she scored 85% in Rio last summer. She hasn't come very close to that in Wellington all spring. She needed it today to be competitive. She's got it. 85, 289 into the lead, including artistic marks of over 90% from the judge at E and the judge at F. That's really going to put pressure on Isabel. Laura Graves and Vidalis take over the lead. Madeleine Vitavries in now in second. Casey Perryglass down into third. Very well deserved. 
into the lead with an 85.289. What a great score. That was so special. Beat that And we were really close as well with the line of three zero eights. One. Just been told here that uh, very nearly 550 people are taking part in audience judging, which of course you can participate in at home as well. Downloading the spectator judging app. Edward Gall looks up at the screen from the warm up as his great friend Carl Hester gets ready to start his test. Edward, the 2010 World Cup champion, will be in the ring in a few moments' time. Three of the world's top five are with us and are in the final run of five. We've just seen Laura Graves, the world number one still to come, and here is world number five, Carl Hester and Nip Tuck. With his Olympic ride from last summer, Carl's fifth Olympic Games, this is Nip Tuck and Carl Hester for Great Britain. Carl won the London International Horse Show qualifier at Olympia in Great Britain on 84% and was second in Amsterdam on 83%. So if he and Nip Tuck can get to that kind of standard today, they won't overtake Laura Graves, but they will be right in touch in this competition. Very high degree of difficulty right off the bat. A full PF pirouette. Super rhythm throughout. I think Carl will be going for it more today. Actually, Carl was one of the first people to really embrace the code of points. Uh, that then fed into this degree of difficulty dashboard judging system. He really won the Olympia qualifier for the first time in his career in 2015 by just choosing all the most difficult movements and most difficult movement transitions and combinations. Beautiful two tempi changes. Looks like Carl's enjoying himself so far. Carl won the freestyle silver medal at the European Championships at Rotterdam a couple of years ago with a previous ride. He's won so many national titles in Great Britain and he coached all three of his teammates in Rio last summer, as well as, of course, riding on the team and helping them to that team medal. One of my favorite people to watch. You're not forgetting when you talk about his coaching, of course, Charlotte Dujardin, the twice Olympic gold medalist, the twice World Cup champion. 20 beautifully performed when Tempe is on a curved line. Trying good self carriage in the counter pirouette. Followed by one tempi straight down that center line. And the music is really supporting the work Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Small over the mistake there. And there is that specific technical mark for the Piaf Passage transitions. It's 
horse could sit a little bit more in the PF. But the rhythm stays very good throughout. You get the feeling with this pattern of it, the music telling a bit of a story, don't you? No doubt. And, uh, you know, what a story this horse and rider combination have been as well. It's a horse that Carl has really brought to the top of the sport. This year, second at Lyon with an 85% personal best. Carl Hester and Nip Tuck for Great Britain. As I say, Carl, no stranger to the World Cup finals, having coached Charlotte Dujardin through her two campaigns to take the titles at Lyon and Las Vegas in 2014 and 2015 with the great Villegro. You can see that was well performed, but as compared to Verdati's before, the degree of bend and suppleness is not quite the same. This looks a little underpowered to me, too, for the trot extension. It's not one of his real strengths, this horse. Jane de la Mer, the owner, and Alan Davies in the kiss and cry. This passage half past zigzag building up towards the climax of this test for Carl Hester and Nip Tuck. I'm sure he'll be very happy with that ride overall. Tom Hunt, who's been making Carl and Charlotte's music, should be so pleased with how that has supported Nip Tuck's quest to Omaha and ride at Omaha as well. It's really great music, that's for sure. I think he's very happy with that performance. In general, I think it was a better performance in his Grand Prix from a couple of days ago. Which, let's not forget, they were third in. So it's possible he stays in third place. Slight rhythm mistake there, which was unfortunate, but still very strong technically. And a big smile from one of the nicest men in the sport, Carl Hester. So we're standing by for the score, 85-307, though. They're out in front for Laura Graves. It's going to take some catching. It's going to take a big ride from everyone still to come. Edward Gall, Judy Reynolds, and Isabel Wirth to go in front. Five-time Olympian, twice a winner of the London International Horse Show qualifier at the Grand Hall Olympia. And part of the silver medal winning team at the World Championships in 2014 with this horse, Nip Tuck, as well. No, the spectator judging is for fun only. You know that, Adam. And uh, they are certainly having fun and they're really getting involved as we have over 500 now joining in spectator judging. Just waiting, obviously, for one or two judges' scores to be confirmed. Our next horse and rider coming forward. There's uh, Andrew Gardner, one of the Olympic panel from Great Britain, who's uh, judging here with us today. Andrew judging at B. And 
And our judge here at K, Maribel Alonso de Quinzanos, Mexico, in the blue. Each judge is accompanied by a written scribe and a computer scribe. And there's the world number one. She'll be last in the ring, having won the Grand Prix here. So 83.614, second at the moment for Carl Hester and Nip Tuck. And actually, it is going to be Nip and Tuck because there's an easy chance that Edward Gall could nip in front of that and deny Carl Hester a podium place today. Artistics, uh, a mixed bag of 86 to just over 90. Then Judge at E giving 90.2, Judge at B 90.8. 83.614, second place for Carl Hester and Nip Tuck. So, Laura Graves is our leader with Vidadis. Laura on that big score of 85.307, putting her back into the uh, sort of class that she showed at the Rio Olympic Games last summer. It's the first time she scored 85% since last September, but she's done it when she needed it and when it matters the most. Well, the team supporting Edward Gall, including on the left of shot, Hans-Peter Minderhood, the defending World Cup champion, sadly unable to come and defend his title here with us in 2017. Fourth in the Grand Prix yesterday, Edward Gall. Edward with his Olympic partner, Glock's voice by De Niro for the Netherlands. Edward was third at Olympia, fourth at Amsterdam, and fourth at Sertogenbosch this World Cup season. And of course, he was the 2010 World Cup finals winner of the great Totalus, the horse that made him the first ever rider to win the three gold medals available at the World Equestrian Games. A lot of expression here in the passage. Interesting that he chose to do the PF on the wall there by B. The second PF is off the wall, which I think is a higher degree of difficulty. And very dramatic music. Huge extended trot, lots of ground cover and over tracking. Scoring 80% consistently this season has scored 82% in World Cup freestyle. Good crossing in this half pass. And bend. Lovely extended trot. But not a super high degree of difficulty so far. Yes, overall, if if everything in Carl Hester's test was accepted with a seven, he'd have scored just over nine for degree of difficulty. If everything's accepted as a seven on Edward Gall's floor plan, it's just under 8.5 for, for difficulty. Really highlighting this horse's trot work here. A little tension in the collected walk.
So Edward Gall and Locke's voice pick it up from the walk tour for the Netherlands. One of three former World Cup champions in our field. Edward took the title in 2010. Showing very good bend in the counter half pass to the left. And you can hear the music changing to complement this, building up. Little stuck in that canter pirouette, making it a bit too tight. Extended counter into a pirouette. Yeah, he's holding his technical performance very consistent day to day. 74.4 on day one, 75 at the moment on our in running total. And the pirouette to the right was better than the one to the left. For more than 15 one tempies, that's for 17 one tempies on a curved line. So the degree of difficulty is going up a little bit now. I believe that was one of Edward's joker lines, which he chose to just do an extended canter for, rather than repeating tempi changes and risking a mistake. Well, that's it when actually the mark just goes in the once as an average of every time you show the prescribed movement. If you've got them right the first time, why risk it the second time? Absolutely. So Edward Gall and Locke's voice, he's really looking to hunt down Carl Hester's score of 83.614. That's really his line in the sand. Has he done enough? So Glock's voice, Edward Gall for the Netherlands. They're really hunting a personal best today to try and get onto and stay on the podium. And technically, it was a very strong ride. As you mentioned, John, the degree of difficulty was not as high as some of the other riders that we're going to see, in particular the next two riders who have the highest degree of difficulties. But nevertheless, a very strong technical ride. Uh, it's so interesting that a lot of Edward's biggest successes have come on US soil. That uh, 2010 World Cup Finals was in Las Vegas. Then his World Championship triple gold medal winning performance was in the Kentucky Horse Park at the FEI World Equestrian Games the That's same right. year. So Laura Graves waiting to see whether anyone will topple her. She might have a long wait because Isabel Werth comes last. She'll be in the ring at 4.45 local here today in Omaha with the world number one ranked horse, Viergold. Laura taking a big sigh there, waiting for the marks to come in. So Edward Gall and Glock's voice for the Netherlands, fourth place, 79-011. So that means, in fact, they are just pipped 
by Madeleine Vitevries, uh, a long-time leader at the halfway point. So Edward Gard locks voice into fourth, 79-011. Uh, some of those artistic marks, 83, 85 from the judge at H. So not quite the score, I think, that Edward would have hoped for here in the finals, but Madeleine Vitevries and Edward in third and fourth for the Netherlands. Laura Graves for the United States of America is our leader. Let's hear from her. <laughs> Getting close. Yeah, two more to go. <laughs> How do you feel right now? Uh, I'm still a little anxious, actually, more anxious than when I ride. So, uh, yeah, just kind of crossing my fingers. About the other night, did you feel like you won the other night? You know, it, it feels like winning. You don't have to, to get first place to feel like you won. And uh, for sure, I felt like we won. Even still not a personal best in the Grand Prix, but I watched my test back and I was super happy with my horse and uh, I can't complain. Big score, see if it holds up. Yeah, thanks. So next to go, Judy Reynolds. Judy inside the world's top 20 on the rider rankings. She finished fifth in the Grand Prix on 74.4%. Her husband Patrick, her father Joe, and their groom Liz, all in the kiss and cry. Irish Olympic freestyle finalist Judy Reynolds and Vancouver Kay now for Ireland. Riding in her second World Cup finals. The native of County Kildare is now based in Germany. Flying the flag at all times. The shamrock quarter marks there on Vancouver Kay's rump. I saw that. Unfortunately, a couple of mistakes right off the bat there. But hopefully she can recover from that. As we mentioned, this is the most, the highest degree of difficulty out of everyone here. And if all of the marks are accepted from the judges, she would score a 9.78 for degree of difficulty. I think 2016 is a year that will long live in her memory. As well as being the first Irish rider to ride in the freestyle final at Olympic Games, she took a five-star runner-up in Al Shakab in Doha, took the win in Central Park, and took the World Cup qualifier win in Devon, Pennsylvania. So a PF pirouette immediately into a counter half pass, very steep, into a double pirouette. challenging. Clean two tempies. So Judy's music, which because she has so many exercises, changes so regularly, it goes from one 80s diva to another. Judy is absolutely not a diva, but JP sometimes is. <laughs>
just looking at that difficulty score there. I mean, it's one of the highest we've seen from uh, any rider. Absolutely. It's one difficult thing after another. She's come tantalizingly close to going over 80% in freestyle. She holds the Irish freestyle record at 79 and some change. Certainly artistically, this is going to be a very high mark, I think. So I've actually only been riding this new freestyle. It's had one or two tweaks since uh, Stuttgart last November. It's given her a 78% at Olympia for fourth place in December. Oh, when in fact she switched out the music for a, a Christmas medley on that occasion. Look at that difficulty score, over 90% now. Wow. It's really approaching her maximum amount that, she, or the accepted amount that she could get of 9.78. And that, of course, is the maximum for everything being an average of seven. If she gets 7.5 on average, it'll be a little bit closer, even to 10. That's right. Very nice PF pirouette. A little bit of turn back time as she turns onto the center line. Showing its real highlight here in this passage, the lovely passage. Oh, she's going to be very happy with that. Judy Good Reynolds. Job. Judy Reynolds, Vancouver K. She doesn't want to turn back time because there's not a lot she'd like to do differently in that test. Very strong performance and lots of energy still. We said the other day how these dressage riders, they're playing their handicap like a golfer. She's playing her personal best, that 79%. She dreams of 80%. Could today, with those artistic marks being so strong, be the day that she has brought over that line? I sure hope so. Well, we have just one left to come at the Here we see this wonderful Piaf. Just had one small problem in the very beginning. But she recovered really well. And what an interesting season she chose for herself as well by actually kicking it off here in Devon, Pennsylvania. She, uh, she decided on Tuesday that she'd take up the invitation and, and go down to the show, took 20 points and then ended up finishing third on the Western European League. I think it was very clever. Big, big smile. Yeah, thrilled with that performance. No shortage of smiles there in the kiss and cry as well. So, Laura Graves is the one who's closest to that trophy at the moment. So close to that 80%. Here it is, 79,386, third. Tantalizingly close, but she's improved. And this is a new personal best on the new freestyle. Her old personal best was scored on the old freestyle music and floor plan. She's getting there. It is, I think it's a done deal. She's going to go over 80% someday at top level competition. Sadly, it's not today, but third place at the moment for Judy Reynolds and Vancouver K. So now she cannot finish outside the top four. Fantastic. Laura Graves, Carl Hester, Judy Reynolds are our top three. Laura on a stonkingly good 85.307. Replicating her Rio performance for the first time since Brazil when she absolutely needed to do so. So Monica Theodorescu there in the red jacket, herself twice a World Cup champion. Watches her competitor, Isabel Wert. 
Also there, Madeleine Winter Schultz, who's been the great patron of Isabel for many, many years, patron and friend. So this is it. One more to go, and we'll know who will hold aloft that trophy for 2017. Will it be the United States of America? Will it be Germany? Isabel Wert and Viergold, the horse she has been riding at the top level for only just over a year. And they are ranked number one in the world. It was her Rio horse. They were individual silver medalists. Winner of our Grand Prix here at Oma at Omaha, Isabel Wirth and Viergold, a combination that have scored over 90% in freestyle, including in January at Amsterdam. Isabel won the Western European League, taking five qualifier wins on three different horses. And she is now, after Rio, the most successful Olympic equestrian of all time. So light-footed to this passage in Pierre and flawless transitions. Look already at the technical score. Very well executed, PF Pirouette. And again, we see these flawless transitions in and out of Passage to PF, back to Passage again. And then into a trot half pass. You might have thought that there was a slight fault with the, the difficulty score, but actually she doesn't have a lot of degree of difficulty upticks in the first seven or eight movements, but now they start crowding in. That's correct. So Isabel Wirth and Viergold. This is Isabel riding for her third World Cup title in her career. She won in 92 in Gothenburg, 2007 in Las Vegas. She's won six Olympic golds, including the individual title, seven European golds, including four individual titles, and seven world golds, including three individual titles. And at the moment, she has no less than four absolutely top-level Grand Prix horses in her stable. This is going very, very well, but you could call it, you could say that if that technical mark stayed within 1% of Laura Graves' posted score of 85.3, that Isabel's artistic would carry her over the top, but it's, it's nip-tuck at the it moment. Is. She can't afford an error. But she's fighting for it. Of course, having made an error in the two tempies on day one, 
that that has the 110% chip in Isabel's mind. That's right, and she wasn't going to let it happen again. Nineteen one ten beats. This is a beautiful horse, but Isabel has a great reputation for actually turning not great young horses into super beautiful performers at the Grand Prix level later in their lives. I think she may have done this. Might be too early to tell still, but. You know, if that difficulty score is indicative of the way the whole artistic 50% is going to go. So active and rhythmic in this PF. This is the horse that with Isabel won Leon Stuttgart and Amsterdam this World Cup season, including Amsterdam on over 90%. Have they now won Omaha and her third finals? She thinks so. I think she's done it. And I think Laura might think so as well. The Oldenburger bred Weigold and Isabel Wert have wrapped up our competition. Win or lose with a super, super performance. The uh, crowds here in Omaha, I know they'll have come from all 50 states, but here the Nebraskans who are being introduced over the last few years by Lisa Roskins and her team to world-class sport have been given a super treat today. Outstanding performance. Appearance. This is Isabel's 10th appearance at World Cup. Finals. Member of the gold medal-winning team in Rio. So Isabel goes to the tack check we stand by for the score and let's just have a look back at the world number one ranked combination the olympic silver medalists beautifully executed pf nearly on the spot again everything just delivered to the nth degree and she's done it 90.704. Isabel Wert and Viergold pretty much equaling their Amsterdam score of 90.7, but they've blown the competition away here. 5% for Isabel. So 1992, she won her first World Cup final. 1996, she won Olympic gold. Here we are, 2017. Isabel is the, th the third time in her career World Cup champion. She has four Grand Prix horses. She could be her own national team at the European Championships this year. Isabel Wert and Viergold are the 2017 FEI World Cup dressage champions on 90.704. Laura Graves and Vidal is second on 85.307. Carl Hester is on the podium with Nip, Nip Tuck, 83.757. Then it's Judy Reynolds, Madeline Vitavries, great result for Madeline, new personal best. Edward Gull, Casey Perry Glass, Inessa Merkelova, Stefan Peters down the order there, sadly. Christy Oakley, Maya Tofta Olison in her first World Cup. Marcella Krinke Susmelia, and she felt disappointed. She felt she could have done better. Florencia Ma uh, Maria Florencia Manfredi for Argentina, first ever Argentinian rider. And Joao Victor Macari Oliva, the Brazilian Olympian, taking 14th. So, awards coming up and the presentation of that storied trophy going back to 1986 with Anna Greta Jensen.
a trophy that's been won by national team coach Monica Theodorescu on two occasions and now won by Isabel Wirth on three occasions. Just sublime. There's a reason they're world number one. There's a reason they've won the World Cup finals by the guts of 5% here. Isabel Wirth and Via Gold Old are the champions and they are already with our field reporter, Jim. Thank you, John. We are looking at the world's champion, the greatest of, of the earth today, uh, not just now, but now for the last 25 years. How does this one stack up for you? No, today it was really, really brilliant. It was really my goal and my challenge to, to, uh, to bring the best test uh, of the season here uh, in the final. And it worked today and I'm really happy and thankful for Bayer. This place had a lot of electricity in it. We had a fabulous ride by an American. What were you thinking after you saw Laura's ride? Yeah, I didn't see her because I was on the horse already, but uh, I knew that uh, she wanted to fight, and uh, she did. And uh, so it was a really great score. And uh, for me, it was clear I have to go the risk, and I have to, to take all what I can do. And it worked, yes. And Vaya was so focused on things she knew. Today, it's her day. You have four of the best horses in the world, but it's a team, horse and rider. What makes you the rider that you are? You know, it's a, the, the, the partnership and uh, to feel uh, the reactions of the horse, to breathe with the horse. And uh, it's, a, it's a long time to go together and uh, it's not always up uh, at the moment. I really have a great time, but I know how it is downstairs and uh, now I, I'm really thankful to be upstairs. <laughs> Congratulations, Isabel. Thank you. Thank you. you can't echo that enough. Congratulations, Isabel Verth, 2017 FEI World Cup champion. Well, that's how it's all broken down after a long year of sport in the Pacific League, the Central European League, the North American League, and, of course, on the Western European League that Isabel Verth won and then brought herself all the way through on the ride to Omaha here in the heartland of America to take her third World Cup title. But Karen, I just uh, bring you back in. Isabel, of course, at top. Laura, getting back to her Rio form, who else sort of caught your eye? How did you feel about the whole day? There were so many great performances. Um, obviously, Isabel is a standout for me. Um, but Laura also, I think, had one of her best performances that I've seen. Um, Carl and Judy. Judy had that. Judy had that very small mistake in the beginning, maybe costing her that 80 percent today. But a, another fantastic performance. And I had to say, one of my favorite horses is Madeline's horses, uh, and I think it's a great future ahead. But everyone, all in all, it was a it was a really great afternoon and um, top day in sport of Triflage. I, you know, playing that handicap card. We've had three or four come through here today and get personal bests as well on this world stage. As Jim says, it's a world championships level event this World Cup coming in the spring at the end of the indoor season as we would call it in Europe but I know here in North America the qualifiers are in and out of doors it is just fascinating and those stories those journeys that will carry on now towards the FEI World Equestrian Games in Tryon North Carolina in August September 2018 those stories are going to continue but uh, great to have these representatives. It's great also to have had our representative of the Pacific League from New Zealand up with us. Absolutely. Central European, we had two. We had Belarus and Russia, our uh, competitors from Western Europe, and of course, our three riders here from North America. Well, there she is, Isabel Verth, getting dressed for the presentation of the press. Won't stand for too much more of this safety pinning. They want to get their interviews. They want the reaction. And Isabel is loving life at the moment. As she said, she has known the disappointment of this sport. She actually, she tries to have, she says at the moment, behind her three top horses at the moment, she's got three others of about eight years old, three more below that of six years old. There she is with Thomas Bauer. Thomas in Europe for a long time, her manager as well. This is a great time for them here together. Thomas, who's uh, looking after the discipline here of dressage at the CenturyLink together with a team <laughs> made up of the Global Dressage Festival team, the likes of Monica Myers, Fitzgerald and Cora Corsford. But look at that leaping for joy. Our champion, Isabel Vert. What we have to all hope now, though, is that McLean Ward wins the jumping, or otherwise Omaha won't have equestrian sport back now <laughs> that we've uh, pipped Laura Graves into second place. 
Henrik von Eckermann, the rider there who just gave her a kiss, was for a long time in uh, Ludger Birbaum's yard. Ludger rides horses also for Madeleine Winter Schultz. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for the 2017 MEI World There it is, the trophy redesigned by fashion designer Reem Akra, who remains a partner of our sport after six years of commitment as title sponsor. Reem Akra has this year been the partner of the Western European League and this, the FEI World Cup dressage finals. That trophy, though, goes back to 1986. Anna Greta Jensen took the trophy. Anki von Grunzven has taken it nine times. And Isabel Werth becomes the uh, three-time winner now, joining those uh, many storied German names, including the national coach, Monica Theod Theodorescu, who's a two-time winner back-to-back -back with Ganymedes. And I think that was in about 1991. And we start our presentation of awards with a lap of honor from our top eight. We start off with the rider ranked inside the world's top ten, Inessa Merkelova and Mr. X. Not quite their day today. But Inessa leads off our lap of honor here today, richly deserved as well for a long season of sport. Edward Gall just coming into the ring. Edward, who scored a sixth place finish today, having been right up there in the Grand Prix. Just in front of him in the ring, US Olympian Stefan Peters. Stefan and Rosamund. You might say for Stefan down the order today, but I bet he's super happy with that horse that he's got aimed at Tokyo. Here's the orange collar of Madeleine Vitevries for the Netherlands coming into the ring. Madeleine and Senin, my co-commentator Karen Pavicic's favorite horse here right. at the finals. And she scored a personal best today. And let's not forget, Chenin is just 10 years old and really right there on 79%. So, so exciting. And here she is, Judy Reynolds, the Irish Olympian, taking fourth place today in the finals. And again, knocking on the door of 80% with that new tough freestyle with Vancouver K. We mentioned those uh, Shamrock quarter marks. I uh, just heard that, in fact, they didn't bring their Shamrock quarter market. An American company helped them out. They made one, and UPS did it here overnight. Winner in Central Park, runner-up at Al Shakub at the Five Star, and then winner of the Devon, Pennsylvania Dressage at Devon World Cup qualifier last September before she went back to do her winter indoor campaign in Europe. So we've seen eighth through fourth. Now it's time for the top three and they'll be led in by the latest hero of the sport in terms of names on the trophy, but she's been a hero of the sport since the first time she put her name on that trophy in 92. Isabel Wert and Via Gold, the world number one ranked combination. Madeleine Winter Schultz there just on the left of the shot. Madeleine who not only has the dressage horses with Isabel and the jumping horses with Ludger Birbaum and his stable of riders, but also eventers with Ingrid Klimke. And she, when you go to a major championships like a World Equestrian Games, she is so much a part of everything. She'll come down and she'll watch the German vaulters in their final. She'll support the German carriage drivers. She's a great supporter of German equestrian sport, not just through her support of her riders, but she just loves equestrianism. So we welcome into the arena the winner of the 2017 Your 2017 champion, Isabel Wert for Germany and Via Gold. World Cup Finals from Germany. Second place. So as Isabel takes her place, she's followed in, of course, by the one we tipped, Laura Graves. We said she would come closest and had the greatest chance, and we were dead right. And there is a third place, Carl Hester from Great Britain with a And Carl Hester. 
Carl, who was instrumental in the team that brought World Cup dressage to Olympia. He had to wait until 2015 for his first win at his home venue. He backed it up then with a win last December with this horse. And Nip Tuck and Carl just get better and better. And here they are, third on the podium. So our riders being invited to dismount, ready for the podium presentation. Our presentations today will be made by... <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> you think she'd have done it enough times now to know how this goes. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to invite on to the podium the third place. So Isabel Verst takes the top step on the podium here in the CenturyLink Center in Omaha, Nebraska as the 2017 FEI World Cup Dressage Champion. Laura and Carl will step on as well. Carl in third place for Great Britain with Jane Delavere's Nip Tuck. Second place. And the runner-up is for the home side, just showing the strength and depth of U.S. dressage. They are competitive. Team medalist at Rio, individually fourth here, having moved up from individual fourth at Las Vegas to second on the podium. Laura Graves, Fidades for the United States of America, the runner-up. FBI World Cup dressage final with that score of 90. Let's hear it you can't blame her for jumping up there first. It's 10 years since she last won a World Cup Finals, and that was in the US. It was in Las Vegas. Your champion, Isabel so, Vert. You are already standing. Please remain standing. So now time to honor our winner with the playing of the German national anthem. Please all rise for the anthem of Germany. So, we welcome Isabel Verth. the FBI Secretary General, to congratulate third place. This is Great Britain's Carl Hester with <laughs> Nip Tuck. Sabrina Ibanez, the Secretary General of the International Equestrian Federation, makes the award first of all to Carl Hester. Now moving to congratulate second place, Laura Gray. Our runner-up, Silver at the World Cup Finals for the U.S., for Laura Graves. And now, to present the trophy, Sabrina Ibanez going to present... And the big one, the FEI World Cup Dressage Trophy. Ninety two, two thousand and seven, twenty seventeen. The three times FEI World Cup dressage champion is Isabel Vert. of the Grand Jury and driven from the United States of Lisa Roskins, founder of the Omaha Equestrian Federation, to now congratulate third place. Well, it's a great pleasure to have this lady involved. Lisa Roskins, president of the Omaha 
<laughs> Omaha Equestrian Foundation president and founder. And the president, the, president of the Grand Jury, Anne Gribbins, representing all of the FEI officials here at the show, adds her congratulations for Carl Hester, but Lisa Roskins and her team. What they have done here in Omaha is simply unbelievable. This state-of-the-art arena is welcoming world-class equestrian sport really for the first time, and I think it's going to come back here. They are richly deservedly picking up a great reputation, and Lisa and her team have done a super job in making riders from all around the world in two disciplines feel so welcome and so that the show is so well prepared for them. Laura Graves in second place. Getting her congratulations from Lisa Roskins and our Grand Jury President, Anne Gribbons of the United States of America. And Lisa and Anne will now present the flowers and congratulate. The dressage, the dressure Meisterine, I think they might say in Germany. She has just done it all. Olympic, world, European champion, and three times World Cup champion. There aren't many who've got all those titles, and Isabel Werf has been doing it for a long time. 1992, the first World Cup title, 2017, her third and latest, and she has enough horses coming up through the ranks that she could be at the top of this sport for a very, very long time to come. Absolutely amazing. So now I'm going to invite the riders to return to those who did all the work, their horses, please. Nico Meredith here in the ring, making the absolutely fair point that we should also recognize these three <laughs> super, super horses. That's a little unfair. <laughs> But Carl Hester's Barney, as he's known, Nip Tuck, Laura Graves' as Diddy, Verdades, and Isabel Wertz, Via, Via Gold. They are their colleagues, they are their athletic companions, and they are their equestrian friends. <laughs> Isabel giving all the grooms some champagne. They deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess who's not driving home tonight? So I'm going to but three real superstars of the sport on the podium. Fourteen real superstars of the sport in our competition today. It's been an absolute privilege and a pleasure to uh, follow the Western European League riders right through since last October when we opened up the season in Odense and it has certainly been a privilege to work for the last two days here alongside Canadian rider Karen Pavicic to bring you this sport. Karen, thank you so much for giving your time and expertise. Thank you, John. It's been a pleasure. So they're all getting back well, aboard. It's about to be lap of honor time here. Don't forget, of course, we have two FEI World Cup finals this weekend. The Longines FEI World Cup jumping final wraps up tomorrow, and that is an incredibly exciting competition as well. McLean Ward is out in front for the United States of America, but the others are breathing down his neck. Gregory Watelet, Romain Duguay, and you can watch that from 2 o'clock local here tomorrow for the CenturyLink Center, Omaha, Nebraska. But now it is time to say farewell to what has been a vintage season of FEI World Cup dressage that's seen the cream rise to the top. And it is Isabel Berth, who is for the third time in her career the World Cup champion. Laura Graves and Vidalis signal once again that they are a force in this sport. And Carl Hester and Nip Tuck get better and better year after year. What a finals, what sport, what a ride. Thank you so much for being part of it all with us. Our thanks to our host broadcaster for their amazing pictures. And thank you to you, of course, ladies and gentlemen, for coming and joining us here in Omaha, Omaha Nebraska. We look forward to talking to you again very soon. But for the moment, from myself and Karen Pavicic here in the heartland of America, it's goodbye for now.